Hi, my name is Michael Chisholm. I'm with VTI, or Visual Techniques Incorporated. Uh, I'm here to help you learn how to use your new box light panel. Uh, so we're going to go over a few things today. Uh, I'm going to try to kind of break this session into two parts. The first one being going over just what is here, the hardware, the Android tools, the things that you have access to in these little sliding toolbars, and then the apps that are built into the panel. This panel is its own Android device, kind of like a phone. Uh, it can do a lot of things independent, or it can do a lot of things when it's connected to a computer. So the second part of this session will be about all the different things that I can connect and how I interact with them after I've connected them. So let's start with the hardware real quick. Right here, you have your power button. And I'm going to go ahead and just shut this all the way down so that we can see what this is like from the very beginning. I think it wants to shut down the PC too, doesn't it? So we'll go ahead and shut down everything. And we'll practice what it's like when you walk in in the morning, you're a teacher on a Monday morning, first day of school, and you need to fire this up and get it working. So you'll, first thing you'll notice is that there is a PC built into this and that the power for the PC and the panel are linked. So when you power one on, it powers the other on. When you power one off, it powers the PC off. We'll get to that a little bit later. But notice when you walk in, you have a black screen. Let me just talk real quick before I even turn this on about some of the hardware that we're seeing right here. This is a super great tool because it's made for schools. It's made to be strong. This is super tough glass. You'll also notice an anti-glare haze over this that allows it to not be quite so reflective so you're not seeing your own face and your own reflection in it. Um, but you'll notice as soon as I've powered it on, it's going to go ahead and start launching. And right now it wants to boot right straight to the PC. You may also see it go straight to this screen right here, the home screen. All right. Uh, going around the edge here are infrared lasers. They're firing laterally, vertically, diagonally, in all directions. Tons of them. And that's what gives us the ability to have touch. This thing will give you 20 points of touch. So most people don't have even 20 points of touch that they can ever access at one point. We only got 10 fingers. Uh, but I could, have, I could essentially have four people up here at this panel if I could fit them all, all of them using five fingers. Um, really, it's not as important about how many points of touch. It's more important that to achieve 20 points of touch, you have to get super accurate to be able to do that. So you'll notice this panel has absolutely zero latency, and it begins working, as far as touch goes, instantly with no calibration. So those are some things to kind of know about the panel. Um, but going to kind of the, the infrared lasers going around here, I want to talk about basic maintenance. So how do I clean this? This is usually one of the very first questions I get. So I recommend if you don't already have a microfiber cloth, uh, you can get one of these. Of course, paper towel or whatever will work. But this will allow you to kind of just rub off any smudges that you might need to. Smudges are good. Smudges means that it's being used. It's being interacted with. This is not intended to just be a static TV. This is intended to be a whiteboard. It's intended to be an annotation tool. It's intended to have you pinching and zooming and moving and interacting. So this is supposed to be a collaborative tool and it should have smudge marks. But if you need to clean it a little bit deeper and you want to try to use some kind of cleaner like a spray, here's my one really important recommendation about that. Don't spray the panel like you would a window and then go grab your rag, let those drips go down. Like If this was a window, I might go tss, 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 all over it and then go wipe up the drips. The problem with doing it that way is that those drips can get down into the infrared laser panel down at the bottom. It'll fry those sensors out. And then you really will just have nothing but a TV because they won't have any more touch capability. So uh, make sure that you always spray your rag, tss, 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 then wipe the panel. Uh, another thing that they say is you want to avoid ammonia-based products. The anti-glare haze that I mentioned before can be affected over time by ammonia and bleach-based products. So a lot of times what I keep with me is some Windex that is vinegar-based. And you can buy the off-brand Sam's Club is fine. Uh, it's a few bucks, but it's a great way to kind of use that vinegar base to go ahead and kill any bacteria or germs, but not damage the, the anti-glare of the panel. All right, so there's some basics. Uh, so let's kind of go over real quick. 
The next thing we need to go over. So talking about hardware, I've got the power button here. It's a very simple button. If I press it once, you'll notice that the screen goes black. It's not actually off. It's just in standby mode. I touch it, wakes right back up. This is a handy thing if you need to leave the room. You don't want to, you want to save some power, but you also maybe don't want the kids coming up and messing with it. Just go ahead and press it once. You can go do what you need to do when you come back, wake it back up. Now, that can be a little bit confusing, though, because sometimes you might think, oh, I've turned my panel off, but you actually didn't. So if you do, like uh, over the weekend, you need to go ahead and power down your panel, that's when you press and hold for about three seconds, and it'll go ahead and go into a countdown. If you do that on accident, and you want to cancel it, you can always cancel that. So that's how the power button works. It's kind of like an iPad. There is just one single button on here. There, if you have the older model, you'll probably notice some different buttons along here. The newer model took those away and put all those features into our, kind of our digital toolbar. It allows us to do all the things that the buttons on the, on the side here used to do. You'll also notice a little infrared receiver right here. That's for your remote, which I'll talk about real quick. You should all have a box like this. Inside that box, you should have some cables. You should have a remote control with batteries. And you should have two pins. We'll talk a little bit more about the pins right now. But the important thing to know about the styluses is that they're really just dumb. There's no technology in these. There's no battery. If this goes missing, Notice that I can use anything I want to to continue writing. This is a dry erase marker with the top on it. So if these go missing or get lost, don't worry. It's not like your old uh, pins that Smart used to make where you might have to pay $99 to replace one. Uh, these are pretty simple. Now, they do have a few nifty features to them. They are magnetic. So you can magnetize them up here. That way they're ready to go at all times. You might magnetize one, keep the other in your drawer in case the other one goes missing from a kid. Uh, but these are handy. We talked about cleaning the panel earlier. This is a good way, especially if you're letting kids interact, from letting snotty, sn snotty Steve not walk up to the panel and like rub his snotty little fingers. You can say, here, Steve, uh, I'd like you to use this stylus. And then he can come right with this, and you can clean this afterwards. So at the end of the day. Um, but there's one more thing about these pins that we'll talk about. And I'll probably talk about this a little bit more. You'll notice that they are actually slightly different. One has a very fine tip. One has a thicker tip. Uh, that's because you can actually assign different colors to each one. So here, I'll get a totally different color. So now I can do blue and yellow at the same time. So that's one of the features that comes on the new panels that wasn't on the old panels. And we'll talk about that a little bit more uh, when we get to this whiteboard app. And we're going to talk probably for about five or 10 minutes on just this whiteboard app. OK? We're going back to what we saw on the panel. We had our infrared right there. If I ever needed to do anything like change the volume on it, there are built-in speakers. I need to make sure that I'm aiming at that, right? Just like any other TV, I need to be able to know where to aim my remote. Next to that, you have two USB ports. And then on the side here, I've got even more going on. And you might take some time to go, go over here and look. Uh, main thing you'll notice, antennas coming out that are built into an actual computer, a slot PC that is slid into the side of this, a full Windows 10 computer. Uh, so you'll have that there available. And then over on the side, you'll have uh, HDMI inputs, three of them. And you'll have multiple USB inputs. USB is intended to carry touch, just like a mouse. HDMI is intended to carry audio video. So if I ever want to connect something like we will here in a little bit, like my Chromebook, I'm going to need two cables. I'm going to need to make sure HDMI is plugged in, and I'm going to need to make sure my USB is plugged in. So we'll talk about that a little bit more, but just know that those are there. They can also be used, these little USBs can be used for a flash drive. If I've got stuff, I forgot files, PDFs, worksheets that I need to get off my computer at home or something I created over the weekend, something I need to leave for the substitute teacher. It's really easy to put it on a flash drive, put a post-it note, say, everything you need is right here. Go ahead and pop it into the front of the panel, and then you'll actually be able to open up all those files, documents, images from your flash drive. OK? So that's the hardware. Let's go into the 
tools. Oop. There we go. You'll see I'm now blue because I changed it earlier. So the Android tools, there are tools that are with you at all times. These are ever present. You'll notice as I move this little slider up and down on the left side, it's also moving the one on the right side. So if you're right-handed or left-handed, it doesn't matter. Whatever side of the panel you're comfortable teaching from, you can use. Also, they're height adjustable, meaning if you need to get them out of the way of a little kid whose maybe arms are only this high and you really don't want them accessing your stuff, you could leave it up kind of high so it's just out of reach of our little kids. Uh, so you can kind of move these <coughs> however is comfortable for you. So we're going to go through these real quick, one by one, uh, and let you know what each of these little buttons do. This is your entire navigation for the panel. So if there's ever a point in which you need to figure out how to get from one place of the panel to another, it's usually going to involve this little tool strip. Okay? Starting at the top, I have a back button. Back button means that anytime I'm anywhere on anything, if I hit back, I go back to whatever I was previously. Okay, it is really helpful when I'm trying to navigate inside of a web page or other things like that. My home button, it's just going to bring me right back here. So if I'm out on the internet, I need to get back home, hit the home button. It'll always bring you back to this box light screen. You have another app just underneath the home. It looks like uh, two windows kind of cascading on top of each other. Well, when you do that, it actually brings up windows cascading on top of each other. So this is a way for me to be able to really quickly jump back and forth between applications or a way for me to close out things that I'm not using, which will improve the panel performance. So uh, that's just a really simple feature. It's built into almost every Android device if you're familiar with Android at all. Um, you'll also notice, let's see, if I press and hold something while I'm in that uh, cascading window look little gray areas appear on the left and right I can drag this over to one side lock it and now I can choose Chrome as my secondary one so now I actually have two applications running and I can take notes I have the word dog on here and we can look over about different breeds of dogs and we can talk about the Afghan hound. So this is a really handy way to use two things at once. Really the only two applications I would ever use in this scenario are the internet and the whiteboard. Those are the two that make the most sense. Not all applications want to play nice in this split screen uh, mode, but those two are the most useful to me as a teacher. Notice that in the very middle, I've got a line going down that's splitting the screen. It has a little white bar on it. That allows me to change and reorient how much I want. So if I want mostly two-thirds whiteboard and just a little bit of uh, my web page over here, just so I can have that information available to me, but have my main things going on over here, you can do that. Okay? To get out of this, this is important. To get out of this mode, I've got to grab this and go either one way or the other. So you might could, <laughs> it's happened before where people kind of get trapped where they can't get out of split screen mode. You've got to go ahead and drag it all the way off and now split screen mode has ended. All right. So that little middle bar is your ability to not just change it, it's also your way to kind of end a split screen session. All that again. Was able, I was able to do that through this little button of the cascading windows. All right. I would normally stop here for questions, but we're going to keep going. Uh, this little button right here, it looks like, you'll notice, kind of like the box light symbol, but with a pin and an infinity. Uh, that's the same as this right here. So you're going to see some redundancy. They purposely put things in a few different places because different people have different ways of navigating. If you get lost one way, you've always got a backup. So I've got two different ways to get to my whiteboard at any given time. I can access this app right here, or I can do it really quickly with the same app. They both launch it back to my whiteboard. Okay? We'll spend more time here in a second on the whiteboard. Go back to home. 
Next one I have here is a little yellow icon with a marker on it. This is your annotation tool. It is ever present. It is always active. It doesn't matter what you have plugged into this TV, you always have a floating annotation bar that allows you to ride over, circle things, highlight certain things, and essentially just put a piece of glass over whatever it is that's behind this screen, whatever is on the screen. I, I joke about if I hooked up a VHS player and played an old tape of Bambi from you know whenever that was made, I could still write over that. So anything that is on this screen can be written on at any time uh, with multiple points of touch or highlighted. And if I use a little sweeper, I'm going to erase it. If I have an annotation that I want to save, if this is really important to me, you notice I have a little floppy disk, a little save button. So I can save that. It's actually going to save it to the internal storage. It says storage notes mark. So if I want to actually go show you that real quick, Inside the panel storage, which is 32 gigabytes of storage in here, I now have my image file that's under that notes mark 2020, it's today's date, right? And I can open that. And so now I have a picture that I just took that I can annotate over even more, right? So now I'm annotating on, a, on an annotation that I just took. So there might be times when it might be helpful to kind of do that and build steps in a process. You also notice that every time I touch this little pin, I get different colors. So I've got blue, green, red, and black. Okay? Those are my four basic ones that are there all the time. Same thing for the highlighter. My highlighter, if I press it, it toggles between four basic colors. Okay? So that is the annotation tool. How do I get back out of this? I can either hit back or I can hit home. I'm going to hit back. That'll take me right back to this window, hit back one more time. Now I'm back at the home screen. Okay. Next little tool, this is brand new. They just added this. It's really handy. This is just a little snipping tool. It's a snipper, a cropper, whatever you want to call it. Uh, and you can see I can manipulate it anywhere. Anything that is on the screen at any time can be snipped. Now, where is it going to save it? Remember, it's always going to save it to the internal storage on this. So if it's something that you want to be able to share out or put in a PowerPoint, this might be uh, adding more steps to the process. But if you want to just snip something and have it right there on the board for you to use at any time or bring it straight into your whiteboard, this is really a great way to do that. So if I hit this little button here, it shows full screen. It's going to do the entire screen. All right, you'll notice I still have my little menu down here. I can hit it again. It goes right back to the size I needed it. These edges will let me stretch it, move it however I need to crop it. If I want to go ahead and save it, I can save it successfully. Notes, mark. It's going to be right in that same file path that it was just created a second ago. All right. If I want to bring that into my whiteboard, there's a little icon that says E equals MC squared. It looks like it's on a chalkboard. I go ahead and press that. And now I've brought that right into my whiteboard. I can resize it. I can manipulate it with the little uh, green button on top, spin it however I want to move it around. I can do that. You'll also notice that this is an infinite whiteboard. We'll talk about the whiteboard more, but I never run out of room on this thing. So I can keep going and going and going and bringing in more and more images and more and more things and manipulating more objects. Okay? Really powerful teaching tool. All right, so that was the little snippet tool. We're going to go back home. Next thing you'll see is a little thing that looks like the box light logo, but within like a Wi Fi icon. That's for an application called Unplugged. Now, this is going to be something that we will spend more time on later. We need to do an entire session on this, and we need to work with IT to get a few things configured for this to all work. But be aware that this is something that down the road, you'll be able to, with your phone, iPad, Chromebook, any student device, teacher device, anything, be able to cast up here in control. So right now, it's not quite ready to go. We will be back to address this, because I think that's a really great tool for teachers to have. But if you've been looking at this screen the entire time and wondering why there's numbers up at the top and this weird little person floating, 
Uh, well, that's what it's for. It's all tied back to that unplugged application. So what I'm actually going to show you right now is not how to use unplugged, because we've got to configure some things later down the road. But I'm actually going to show you how to just make that go away for right now. Okay? So if I just touch that number that's at the top of your screen, it gives me an option to turn off the floating pin code window. And I can toggle that off. All right? So I'm going to go ahead and do that here on mine. Again, that's all part of this unplugged application that I access here. Yeah. And if I go down to settings, um, I believe I can also turn off a few other things. Let me see. This guy right here. If this is something you just don't really want to be in the way right now until we get you up and running, just touch it. Just like I did with the numbers, I can just touch that little floating person. And I can say floating teacher button only on the home screen or disable. All right? It, this is going to be something we get back later. It is super useful once you get it working. But for right now, let's just get that off the screen so that we can use that without numbers and distracting images being around the screen. OK? Next button you have here is a blue button that looks like a screen dragging to get bigger. This is your freeze slash zoom button. So anything on the screen, remember every tool we've talked about over here on the Android toolbar, it works all the time, no matter what is happening on the display. But you'll notice that it lets me zoom in. So if there's ever something that I needed to be able to zoom in on, I have the ability at any time to freeze the screen, zoom in on something, move around, look at it a little bit closer up, help that student in the back of the room see text better or whatever it is we're talking about. But the other function of this is that it's also essentially a freeze button. If some of you all liked having a projector where you could just freeze the image and then go back to your computer, if I go right now over to the computer, and let's say I need to put something on the computer and go check my email, right? I can hit that little button, and it's essentially going to freeze it. Screen is frozen. Nobody can mess with my computer. All they can do is zoom in and out on it. They can't do anything. I can check my email, respond to a parent, uh, speak to the principal, whatever I need to do. OK? So that's the little freeze button. Uh, by the way, that button is, corresponds with your remote control. So you'll notice on the remote, there is a blue button. So think blue, cold, cold, freeze. Well, if I associate those two, then I can also hit this button. You'll notice the exact same thing happen. So if I leave this at my teacher desk in the back of the room, I have something on the screen. I need to freeze it real quick. Blue button is my freeze button. Or if I'm at the panel, I can just do it with that little icon right there on the toolbar. OK? Either way. We're getting to the end of our toolbar now. You'll notice that the second to last icon down here is a screwdriver and a wrench crisscrossed. Those are my basic little tools. These are really handy. I think especially the lower grade levels will be using these all the time. But it's essentially a spotlight, a countdown timer, and a stopwatch. These are always active, ready to use all the time. So the spotlight this is a great way to focus someone's attention on something specific. All right? If we want to even do like a fun reveal where the kids walk in and this is all they see, and maybe you have a surprise maybe good, maybe not, maybe a pop quiz. It could be over here, and you invite the student to come and bring it over and find out, uh-oh, it's pop quiz day, or you know, it's Ethan's birthday. Whatever it is, you can have something written on the screen in your whiteboard be able to move this around. Remember, again, this is always active. So no matter what I'm doing, like if I were to say, happy birthday, Ethan. I can have that running in any application I want to at any time. And I can only see the information that I want to see. So it's a great way to keep them focused. It's also a great way to do a little fun reveal. Next tool, countdown timer. This is super handy. It is a floating timer. A lot of teachers I see go to the internet, and they have an internet timer that they use all the time. Uh, this is just a really simple timer that's built in. Time's up. You hear a nice little chime. You can hear the speakers working. Uh, the speakers are adequate, by the way, for the entire classroom. I don't think that you'll need to attach any additional speakers 
uh, or use any of your old teacher speakers uh, by the computer, this has great 30 watt speakers built in. So you can see when it's done, it starts to count down. You can say, all right, guys, it's been 23 seconds since I told you all to get back in your seats, whatever it is. You can also make this full screen. If I need this to be the most important thing that they see clicking on the screen is that countdown timer, right? Pause, reset, close, all right? So similarly, same toolbar. The next one next to it was a stopwatch. Stopwatch is the same thing. You notice it's a floating thing, but it counts up. So instead of counting down, it just counts up. So let's see who can, let's see who can put their crayons up the fastest, or let's see who can complete their lab and get it turned in onto my desk the fastest. Okay, great job. You can hit lap, lap, lap. So it kind of works almost like a track uh, coach would use lapping each kid to see how fast they can get. Okay. Last one here is a little slider icon. So it looks kind of like a little equalizer slider. That's going to bring up my inputs. So a few things I can do here. I can change my inputs. I can see what inputs are active. I can change volume. And I can also change brightness. Okay. Most people are going to want this at full brightness at all times. But if we end up in a scenario where you're having to zoom a session to a kid who's quarantined at home, I have seen where sometimes for those kind of things where the camera lens of the iPad or whatever is you're using doesn't like it to be quite so bright and it just blows out the screen with too much white. So you can adjust it for those kind of scenarios. If you're actually in front of kids, you usually want it at full brightness. But I can change volume here and I can also see everything that I have available. So you have a PC. That is the built-in computer that is slid into the side. If I need to switch to it, it goes away after a second, by the way. I just hit PC. All right, now I'm on to my Windows PC. Oops, there we go. We'll get back to that here in a second. If I need to switch back to Android, there's a little Android alien icon. Android just means the home screen, essentially. It's, it means whatever is inside of the actual panels storage itself. Okay. You'll also notice that there's little blue dots under those two. That means that they are active connections. I do not have blue dots underneath any of my HDMI's or my VGA. As soon as I connect something though, it will give me a little blue dot to let me know that it is active. So it kind of helps you if you've got something connected to HDMI 3, um, it lets you know, okay, I can't remember if it was my PC or if it was that other thing, maybe it was my document camera plugged in HDMI, right? Well, it's going to kind of light up and show you if it's active or not. All right, so that was the toolbar. And then the last thing we'll kind of go over here on the hardware side and the panel side is uh, all these different applications. So like I was showing you just now, there are multiple ways to get to everything. In particular, what we just did, the volume, the input changing, you can get to that from here, like I just showed you. Or you can also get it to it from here. If you slide up from the middle of the panel, I usually use two fingers. I think you can do it with one. Just slide up, kind of right above the blue circle. Practice this. Slide up, it lets you get all those same functions. Some people like that a lot more. Um, it's whatever's comfortable, comfortable for you. Okay? I can do the exact same thing with this button right here, though, called input. So input does the exact same thing. So three different ways. In fact, I'll even give you a fourth way. There's an input button on the remote. So I've got four different ways to bring up my volume control, my brightness, and my input switching. They wanted to make that really versatile on how you get to that because they have taken all the buttons off the side. So they gave you multiple ways to get to that because it is really important for navigation. So basically, here's what we got going on. We've got settings. Settings is where I'm going to go in and I'm going to check if I ever have a Wi-Fi connection or an internet connection down. It is a place where you can go and actually change the name of your inputs. Uh, so I can show you that real quick. Uh, but mostly, I probably don't want to mess with the settings too much. This is going to be something that your IT department is going to be using most of the time. You'll see I do have Note. Note is going to be my application that we'll, talk, we'll spend the most time on here on this side, where it is the whiteboard, the infinite whiteboard. 
got my finder. Finder is the folder. It's the, it's the storage uh, built into this where everything is saved. If I need to access something from either my USB, uh, cloud storage, something I saved to the panel through a snapshot, uh, it's all going to be there. We talked about input. And then you've got Chrome here, which is going to be your browser built in. All right. Last one we'll talk about is document camera. But quite honestly, unless you have the specific type of document camera that works with this panel, you're probably not going to use that. You're probably going to connect that to your computer and then switch to your computer as an input. So document camera is an app on here, but you probably won't be using it. Last one is keeper, and that's just a way to clean up things in case you ever feel it getting sluggish. All right. So let's go through these one by one. Settings. Right here is where I can check my internet connection. Right now it shows I'm connected. I'm good. You can also see a few other little things like I can do startup and shutdown. If you guys want your panel to remember to turn off every single day at 5 o'clock, I can say add task. Then I can go over here and I can say, let's see, is this, yeah. I can say 5 p.m every day, right? So if you forget to turn it off every single day, it will just go ahead and automatically shut down. So again, that's under settings, startup shutdown, um, and then you just add a task, OK? And we'll go ahead and hit check mark. I'll go ahead and get that set up. Input setting is another handy one. Input setting allows me to use aliases. So if I was, for example, going to have HDMI 1, almost always be my Chromebook. Now it is. And now I don't have to remember, is it HDMI 1, HDMI 3, OK? Now I know. HDMI 1, as long as I don't change that cable out, it's always going to be Chromebook. So these are handy for teachers who sometimes have a hard time just kind of remembering what each thing was. All right. That's about all we need to talk about. If you ever notice that the date and time is wrong, you can change that in settings. But in general, you don't need to be in settings. Note, we're going to save that for last. Finder. Again, I told you this is like where all my folders are. One thing I do want to point out about this, there is an icon called Cloud Drive. If you hit that, you can actually add your account to the panel. So I can hit Google Drive. It's going to ask me to log in. And now I will actually be able to access all the files or save things to and from my Google folder, my, my Google Drive, right here from the panel. So uh, of course, there is some security involved with that. If you choose to do this, then know that if you leave your room, your children might have access to your entire Google folder and might accidentally move things or delete things. So, do that uh, if you feel like you can, can kind of control that security environment of it. Uh, but it is a really handy way to be able to, if I want to quickly bring in an image that I found last night at my computer at home, put on my Google Drive, and I want it to be in my whiteboard here, I put it there, I find it, I import it. Okay. So uh, basic functions are available in here that you would do with a normal computer. If I need to create a new folder, and I'm going to go ahead and create one, called, let's call it art. All right. You could make it, you can name it first, second, third period. You can save files uh, based on subject matter like math, reading, whatever. I just created one called art. And you can start to kind of organize where you save things and where you store things on the panel. OK, so we'll get back to that. But if I need to rename that, I'm going to click it. You can see I can copy it, cut it, delete it, rename it. Maybe I decide I don't want that to be my art folder. I want that to be my math folder. I can do that. Okay, All the same things I would do on a computer, uh, they're available down here. You have those functions. And if I need to take a folder, let's say, let's say our notes, marks, something we did earlier. Let's say I want to cut that. Go back here to my new folder called Math. Now I can hit this little clipboard, and I can paste it. So I can move things around after the fact if I need to. All right. 
Chrome, let's talk about this real quick. This is super handy. Uh, a lot of times you are going to be using this just to pull content. Uh, I do not recommend using this in the place of your computer, all right? There are some people who think, all right, well, this is going to be, I don't even need a computer anymore. Well, for some things, that may be true. But I'll tell you this, video playback, things that require a lot of RAM and things like that are always going to perform better by switching the input over to your computer and using Chrome in there. However, if you need to just grab a quick picture, like I did here, or I need to be able to find a good image that I want to bring in and talk about, if I find an article or a PDF or something that I, I know is accessible on here, go ahead and use this. But things like YouTube sometimes can be a little bit, have a harder time buffering on this Android uh, Chrome than your computer. Uh, just use this as good as you can, and if you ever notice issues, feel free to switch over to the computer side because you may have better performance. All right, but I really like uh, to make sure that if I am searching for an image, I always have to make sure I'm searching for an HD image because remember, you're now dealing with a 4K 65 inch screen. So if I get a junky little image, it's like 300 by 400 pixels, it's not going to look good when it's stretched really big. So whenever you search for images, make sure you search for high definition images. I like this one. That's a sweet little image. I can see it's a really high quality. Now I can tap it, uh, hold it, and that's the same as right clicking, and I can download the image. It's going to actually ask for permission. I'm going to give it permission. And now Chrome has permission to save files to my folder. Okay? Let's see where I downloaded it to. So I went to storage, emulated, download. So we're going to find it basically in the download folder. And here you go. Here's that super high quality image. Then I can now bring this into my whiteboard. I can annotate all over this. We can talk about his, what, like canines, right? Those sharp teeth. And that's how you use that, OK? So lots of cool things in Chrome. And I'll also point things out like this. Hopefully, you all don't have too much of a hard time looking at my backside here. If we go to something like Google Maps, this is where it becomes really cool to have a touch screen, right? I can go down here to satellite image. And now, all of a sudden, I can give my kids a pinch and zoom experience of traveling the entire globe, right? And you're going to notice that it's going to buffer a little bit. But I mean, things like this allow me to give kids interactive things right here on the panel in Chrome where they can travel the entire world. If you keep zooming out, it gets really fun. Yeah, look, I can keep going. <clears throat> and I think on the other app, I can even go all the way out. If you were to do this on your computer, I think you can go all the way out. You can go explore the moon, Saturn, the International Space Station. All these things are just built into Chrome. All right, let me go over here to the desert. So that's why it's functional to have this on here. If I want to, again, grab something like here, we're talking about this, this area of Algeria today. Remember, I can always go and crop. I can talk about just this section. And I can bring that right into my whiteboard, OK? So that brings us to the whiteboard. I keep talking about, well, we're going to spend some more time on the whiteboard. Well, here we are. This is probably the best part about this panel is this whiteboard. You can access it a few different ways, remember? There's this way here with the button on the home screen, or there's the little purple button here that we talked about in your toolbar. Either way, that launches my whiteboard. And I'm going to go ahead and create a new page. So a few things about the whiteboard. We're going to work from left to right. I'm going to move kind of quickly. But because this is a video, you can pause it, rewind, and you can watch it again. Down here at the bottom, I have my hamburger, right? I'm going to click on the hamburger, and you'll notice that this is where I can create a new document, open an old one, save this whiteboard. I can name it by the date. I can name it by the class. Uh, if I have different periods of the day, I can name it after that. However, I want to organize my thoughts. This is where it lets me import things, either images, PDFs, or SVGs. Uh, the, again, that's going to try to open up my storage location. It's going to ask me where. 
Remember, we went to download, and earlier we downloaded this picture of the dog. Well, now that dog is right here in my whiteboard, and I can manipulate it. I can write over it. We can label it, all that good stuff. You'll also see that I have cloud storage. So if I earlier took the time in my file folder to go link cloud storage, I would click that right here, and it would actually export this entire thing straight to my cloud. That way I could easily uh, share it with parents, share it with other kids in the class. But again, I have to go through that process first of adding my account. All right. Background. This is a, a good one. So down here, remember I'm under the hamburger, second one up, it's called background. Background's going to let me change. It defaults to this kind of chalkboard. It's like this super dark green. It's going to default to what feels like an old chalkboard, but if I want this to be more of a whiteboard, I can make it that. If gray is my favorite color, or it's Valentine's Day, we want to make it pink, or it's St. Patty's Day, we want to make it green, we can change it. All right. You'll also notice that you can have some textures. So in that same background, you'll notice I have lines. I can create different kinds of lines, handwriting. I have grids, dotted grids, music staffs, music staffs with bass clef, and then I've got different uh, sports templates as well. And even if you're not a coach, there's a lot of useful things. I love sports metaphors. We can always set up a game here to where we're going to learn math, but you've got to get to first base, second base, third base before your team can go ahead and like get whatever it is, that sticker or that prize at home base. Uh, so there's different ways you can use these backgrounds. But in addition to having the different little uh, textures, I also have, I'm going to tell none, custom. All right, so custom is where maybe I want to bring in my very own thing. Right, something that I know I want to use all the time. That way I can use it as a background, label it, write over it. It could be your school logo. It could be a picture uh, that you know, kind of represents you. Or it could be something more practical, like if I go to Chrome, let me type in uh, life cycle frog. I'm going to find an image. Remember, what I said earlier, when I look for image, you always want to make sure you get HD. <laughs> oh, I can't zoom in right there. HD. I don't know if you can see that. Always look for high definition image. Now I'm going to look for one. This looks good. I'm going to preview it first. Make sure it's going to be big enough. That looks pretty good to me. Oh, will it let me? Come on. It's like one of those things where it wants to zoom in. If this isn't the right image for me, I go back. Maybe th this one will work. Ah, yes, that's much better. Press and hold. Download image. Go back to my whiteboard real quick. Of course, I could have cropped it and dropped it in also. But I want this to be a background, because I'm going to use it today. I'm going to use it again tomorrow. I'm going to use it next week. I'm going to use it next year. I want to go ahead and just have it accessible. So I'm going to add it. It was in my download folder, and there it is, life cycle of a frog. Now, it may stretch it. It did, because remember, the image was square. I'm now putting it onto a rectangle screen. But why this is useful is because now I can take my pen tool. You'll notice it has a white background. I can change my pen to be white, make it super thick, and then I can come up here I can erase those, and then I can have the students come up and label it themselves. Right? Then when they want to see the answers, I just clear everything, right? And now I can see them again. So little things like that are tricky, uh, fun ways to engage your kids, bring in content, make the most out of this panel. To get rid of this background, I go back to the hamburger background. I'm going to just choose for right now. I kind of like this gentle minty green. I like this. This is calming. It actually lowers your blood pressure. I did a science project in fifth grade. So uh, let's go over this one more time. I talked about this earlier. 
but in addition to my cursor tool, which is just what allows me to grab objects and move around the panel, the next most important one is the pin tool. If I press the pin tool again, you'll see this is where I can actually designate which thickness gets what. So if I want one pin to have a different effect than the other, that's where I change that just using these little tabs right here to alternate between them. Okay? Your finger, by the way, will always be detected as a thick tipped stylus, right? Unless you're using your fingernails or something. And then it might detect it as a thin. All right? You'll notice that in addition to being able to change between my two pin colors, I can also change between paintbrush and more of an uh, artistic paintbrush. All right, so I've got a few different kinds of things that I can use. Let's see, I'm using the fine tip. I want it to be red. You get different textures and different feels for some of these than you do for others, even though those look kind of the same to me. All right, if there's a color here that I don't see in my kind of quick ones that I can grab, the kind of basic Crayola colors, I also have all the millions of colors over here where I can get very exact on that color that I want to grab. My eraser tool is the next one. I like this eraser tool because it's basically just going to let you, anything you touch disappears, the entire thing. Now remember, if there's something I did not intend to delete or erase, I always have my handy dandy back tool, my undo tool. I wish we had an undo tool for the year 2020, but we don't. So that's that. If I need to clear the entire screen, trash can, everything goes away. If I want to put some shapes on the board, I hit my shapes tool twice and it lets me see all my different shapes. So let's see, I can do a white circle. I can do a red square. If I use my selector tool after the fact, I can now grab this white circle, make it bigger, resize it. I can even change the color of it. Maybe I admit it was white, but now I want it to be yellow. Now it is, and I can barely see it. <laughs> Let's make it red. All right, so all those things can be done there. You'll also notice that under my shapes menu, uh, I also have some things like arrows. So if I'm trying to talk about uh, this triangle wants to get out of the circle, <laughs> it can do that. All right, dotted lines, be able to kind of connect two ideas to one another, doing mind maps, kind of diagrams, building Venn diagrams, whatever it is that you want to be able to do. And then I also have a little tab called 3D. So 3D is going to be my spheres. Because I'm running out of room, I'm going to use my cursor tool to kind of drag this over and resize it because this is an infinite whiteboard and I never run out of room ever. Right? This little hand tool right next to me does the, almost the same thing as the cursor tool. Its entire job is just to let you manipulate the actual environment that you're in of the whiteboard. That's all this is. And when you touch it, it will actually give you a preview of where you are in relation to the other things. So if I get really crazy and I go, and I'm taking this infinite whiteboard thing to the actual infinite, and I want to make this thing gigantic, this is handy because I'll touch it and it'll let me see, oh, where am I in relation to everything else on this whiteboard? And I can move it around, okay? Last little button on here to talk about is there's a little uh, painter's palette. If I click that, it's actually going to launch an app inside the app. It, it relaunches a new whiteboard for you that has different tools. This is the artistic palette. They included this because sometimes that whiteboard is as handy as that is. Sometimes our artists want to get a little bit more technical, detailed, and this is a great center to give your kids as a reward. They love to come up here. I probably spent an hour one time at a trade show creating this incredible landscape. But you'll notice these tools are different. Notice that the pencil actually has the texture of granite. The paintbrush actually has very smooth kind of textures in it that feels like there's actually paint on the page. I've got a rough edge, and then I've got my eraser, okay? Over here, if I need to blend colors just the same way as, uh, what's his name, uh, Happy Trees guy, Bob Ross, if I needed to blend some colors together, I could. So now I can kind of blend that here with this, oh, go away. You can see all these different gradients I can get. So I can do shading and texture and really let my kids have fun.
okay? If they make a work of art that's really cool and you want to be able to print it and send it home, notice that you do have a save button down here. I can save it to my, well, I don't have an art folder anymore, but I have a math folder. We'll call it math. I can name it Johnny's Work, right? So we can rename it for the right now I won't. I'm going to save it. And then the step I would need to take is go find that, put it on a flash drive, put it in my computer, or whatever computer is connected to the printer, and I would print it. Okay, so there's some steps, but you can take that and you can save it and get it off the panel if you need to. So there it is, it's a PNG image, and I can copy it, put my flash drive in the side, which will make a new window form here, open it, paste it, then go plug that into my computer and hit print, okay? So when I'm ready to get out of this and get back to my whiteboard, that's where I just use this little back button. Oh wait, that's the actual undo button. I hit the little arrow button. That gets me back here, all right? So this is a very handy tool. Notice that in addition to having the infinite whiteboard feature, you also have this over here, okay? So if this is page three, all right? I can add page four. Ah, interesting, it's changing color because I'm changing the angle of my pen. So it's thinking it's different uh, between thick and thin. But all those different things I can now go back and I can navigate between them. If I click on the actual 4-6, you'll see it brings up just kind of like PowerPoint. It brings up everything so I can jump between windows and I can see all my work in one place. All right? So that is the whiteboard. It's a really handy tool. Uh, down here at the very bottom, I've got a few extra little things to talk about real quick. Keeper is just going to help clean up that storage. It's going to help it work in fast. So feel free to use the Keeper as often as you need to. And if you hit the waffle at the bottom, <coughs> it's just going to show you all the same apps. It's just a background look. Instead of having a nice neat on the home screen, it's a background look of every single app that lives on the panel. Um, right now, this is not really something that you can go add a bunch of extra apps to. They purposely lock this down for education. So unlike my tablet, my whatever Android tablet I might have, where I can just go to Google Play Store and upload Angry Birds and everything I want, this uh, was made for schools so it's a little bit more secure. Well, every time you have one of those third-party apps on it, you have privacy issues and there could be data being collected. So uh, there are ways to get it on there if, if, your, if your school decides to, but Boxlight as a company decided we want to make sure that this is a safe educational tool. So that concludes our overview of the panel. The next thing we'll be talking about is actually connecting a computer and running through things like connecting a document camera, a Chromebook, and doing all the basic functions that you guys do to, every day as teachers. So we'll take a little break.